Governor of the Views, we have uh, young people and we have people of all different age groups within the state of Iowa. What are your, some of your concerns, uh, let's say, for the young people of Iowa? Well, I think really the concerns that I have today are very complex because the society of living in Iowa, though at a somewhat slower pace than we find it in more metropolitan areas of the country, is becoming increasingly more complicated for all of us. I think the greatest challenge that we and the adult level have today is really opening the channels of communication with young people, which includes the young adults of our state as well as the youth of our state that are still in uh, the academic areas of study. Also, I think uh, we're doing something about this, but we're not doing it in nearly the efforts that we need to place on it. Uh, the emotionally disturbed young people in Iowa are becoming a great concern to me uh, at the high school level as well as an early adult level. We seem to be, for some reason, uh, not only in Iowa but in the nation, pushing these people across an emotional barrier almost to a point of no return. I think we have to understand that with the numbers of people who I think by 1970 about 60 percent of our population will be 25 or younger have never really experienced a total war as the adults of this country have. They have been trained in trying to understand the teachings of the Bible, the believing in the brotherhood of man, and believing that in a democratic society all people should be allowed to develop to the maximum of their capacity, whatever that capacity is. And yet we see our state and our country torn with an internal strife, a lack of understanding, a lack of tolerance, ridden with racial prejudice, job problems, and people working at less than their capabilities because of some of the prejudices that have existed in our history. I think this is one reason that we see uh, percentages of our young people who are being fed up with the adult society and saying that uh, you say nice things, but you don't practice what you really are preaching. And our problem is trying to, I believe, not only talk to the young people, but to work with the young people in overall betterment of our society. And I think that this problem of communication really is the greatest problem we have. Now, we've started in Iowa many things to better train uh, for job opportunities the young. We've been very late in doing it. I think the area of vocational technical uh, schools, for example, are areas where Many of our young people who have not been able to go on for higher education can have an opportunity for technical training and for vocational training. I think also uh, very few of those who have gone on to institutions of higher learning probably shouldn't have gone, and as a result have been those freshman dropouts that we experience in our colleges and universities, and they could have better gone to a technical training school. Also, our high school graduate or our high school dropouts in our high school courses who are, of course, undertrained and underskilled and underemployed can be trained in this type of a system for better employment. I think the relationship of the trouble we see across the country and the fact that most of the mob violence that has existed has been in youth from 14 to 25 years of age. But most of these youngsters are followers, they're not leaders, but they are led by a hard core of rebellious, many times criminal elements in these cities and states that result in a lot of these people who have no job opportunities, no money in their pockets, who are culturally and economically deprived, following and doing anything to attract attention or to draw to themselves attention that they need uh, in this social structure that we live in. So these problems are very complex. Now, is this partially going to be solved by uh, people other than, as you say, these elements of the uh, criminal or such as this being the leaders? The, uh, can we solve it partially by other individuals who are actually uh, deeply concerned uh, going in and giving out themselves to be the leaders? I think this is really the only way we can solve it. So many times I feel that we have turned to the federal system of government and say we have a huge problem that we can't handle, now come and do something about it. Well, I don't think the appropriation of a hundred billion dollars in America today would solve the problems of underprivileged students and young people in our society. 
I think it resolves itself down to the individual person in our society being concerned about the well-being of a fellow human being and interested enough to not only give perhaps a little of their money but to give an awful lot of their time and their energy to these young people and making them feel a part of a productive society. They don't like being demeaned, for example, just creating a job which is meaningless and putting a young person out hauling garbage, for example, when they could be trained to be a mechanic is a demeaning position. But doing something to encourage this young people to have a job where he can work and then helping him to continue his education, counseling them about the problems they have in their home. They don't want to be problems. Uh, they, they want to be creative and helpful. And I think it results in the fact that individual Iowans and individual people all over America have to give of their time and their energy trying to correct the conditions that are the result of sometimes uh, 100 or 200 years of social structure that has been wrong in depriving these people. Are uh, many times uh, young people misunderstood, uh, misunderstood in the sense that they are interpreted by being, as by adults, as being hostile, as being uh, impolite, uh, some of these things, purely as a matter of the young person really not knowing from their past experience how to conduct themselves in a way that's understood by the adults. I think this is undoubtedly true, and again, I think it results in the breakdown of the home structure in some of the lower economic areas of our society, where that in this home structure, they do not have the opportunity to, to observe the normal rules of, of living that we observe in family life. They don't have proper parental control, nor can the parent give guidance when the youngster is out on the street every night, for example, to 11 or 12 o'clock or maybe later without the parents knowing where the child is at. I think it's interesting to note, of course, that many of these people are not simply from the lowest economic structure, but from the, the great broad middle class of Americans where they have had many of the benefits uh, of being well educated and having everything they need to eat, proper clothing to wear, and being taught the mannerisms of, of the society in which we live. But at the same time, sort of acting out, uh, almost to the same degree that we find, for example, in a retarded person, trying to draw attention, love, and affection, and understanding. And if there's no other way to receive it, then this acting out process does receive that attention in this way. People like Rap Brown do offer an immediate solution. It's a torch and a fire and a way to attract attention. The other means is slower but more necessary. But this is their communication in what we might call the negative way. That but is absolutely correct. Now, I think uh, we can do many positive things. I think all of these young people, if you reduce it down, have the same desire in their heart that you and I have. Uh, most people, in my opinion, are afa afraid to turn within themselves anymore and really, uh, so to speak, be still and listen to God, to commune with nature and to understand their purpose of being. All of us like to feel that there is a purpose for our life. These young people feel the same way. They'd like to contribute to humanity while they're here and being fraught with conditions that don't allow contributions, then they resort to destructive forces uh, that in itself they hope will better society, really, if you were to talk to them about it. This destruction, they think, will bring about a betterment of the conditions they observe. Uh, we can reverse this trend by understanding the problems they face and by ourselves not being ashamed to talk about our innermost concerns which are the same as theirs in almost any family in America, if you talk to the family unit and you reduce it down to those people and really say, what do you want in life for yourself and for your children? And most parents today would say, I'd like to provide a better way of living so that my children don't have to face some of the problems that I faced. Well, as you and I know, we can't do that. Our children are going to face their own problems probably tougher problems than you and I faced, even though I lived uh, as a youngster in the Great Depression years, being poor was no problem because everyone was poor. But today it is a problem because everyone isn't poor. 
Most people live in a rather affluent society, and yet we have a great broad spectrum of underprivileged youth. And then the average middle class youth see this underprivilege and they say, why? They have the capabilities, but they've never been allowed to develop them. And they start acting out, they find themselves in trouble with the law, and the minute that's entered on their record, they find themselves further deprived of the necessary training and education they need. So we need to bring them back into the spectrum and to assist them in these ways and listen. You know, I think it'd be well for we as adults to spend more time listening to our younger people than in preaching to them. Governor Hughes, do you think adults are secure and uh, have the answers to these questions? Well, I think probably we see a very high degree of frustration in our adult society today. I, I doubt that this is much different than it has been throughout history, except that we have a largely increasing population, not only of our own country, but of the world, so it's becoming more concentrated and the problems are becoming more complex. Uh, I'm not one who subscribes to the theory that our problems are insoluble, because I happen to think that Though each generation faces increasingly greater problems as they come along, I, God has given each succeeding generation greater ability and greater techniques to solve those problems. But I do find in the circle of people that uh, I come in contact with in large numbers that people who have been modestly and extremely successful in professional fields in, in almost every area that you come in contact with people who are reaching uh, the near middle age, we might say, my age and, and older, uh, uh, who are frustrated. They've been successful in their chosen careers, their families sometimes are grown, their younger children are in college or have graduated from college, and now they find themselves unable to communicate with the younger generations of our people, almost totally out of contact with the international scene that we find ourselves involved in as leaders of the world and feeling that perhaps they have failed in what has been an eternal search for peace and understanding in humanity. And we reduce it again to the final analysis of what purpose do I have in life? And if each one of us ask ourselves that question, and we were to say, how successful have I been in contributing to human understanding in my years here on this earth? I think most of us would have to concede that we have not contributed to the extent that we have had the ability to contribute. And that for that reason, we're probably failing to communicate to the younger generation of our own ability and perhaps because of our own failures to make the contribution we should have made. It's very interesting, I think, to see the interest of people now, however, wanting to do more. And we should utilize these talents because people my age have more free time, they have higher educational capabilities than previous generations, they have more professional experience and ability, they can focus on the problems. So under the right direction and with the right leadership and working with the young people, we have probably the greatest opportunity we've ever had. I believe it was Secretary Gardner of Health, Education and Welfare that said uh, the biggest problems we have are really the largest opportunities brilliantly disguised. And so we can find solutions by working for them. Well, we have the situation of both the adult living longer as well as the increased population. And again, with some of the changes, as, as you commented, working with, then in some of the generations before, it was much more uh, likely that father and son and mother and daughter be working together rather through some of these formative years mm -hmm. rather than they are now and also that perhaps some of the questions were answered at home. Um, do you think that as adults, and not spending as much time with our own children or other children, that we get concerned as um, young adults and as teenagers or preteen children, uh, question some of the values and question some of the things that are going on in the world? Do we get scared and not pursue uh, the thought with them? Well, I think undoubtedly we do, because I think, uh, I remember as I grew up and uh, was a young adult, that uh, really you were looked at with a scance when you started to question some of the so-called accepted principles and the way we did things. 
I think every young person should be encouraged to ask questions and not be afraid to ask questions. They ought to be uh, encouraged to ask questions about everything from the Bible to professional occupations and our international policies, our state policies, our local policies, our educational systems, uh, the way we live, anything should be open to question. I think they should be constantly encouraged to seek the truth because I personally feel the ultimate answer is that God is truth and God is love and that when we question things we can't help but contribute to a better society by simply asking the questions. But I think what we should train them to do is ask the questions with constructive efforts and ideas rather than destructive efforts and ideas simply to tear down. And I think by doing this and within this framework that probably the generations that now find themselves separated because of lack of communication can perhaps make that final contribution to humanity of really finding together some of the solutions that all of us have been searching for independently. I think it may be a rare opportunity. Have you any suggestions as to how we can uh, be, guide our youngsters in the direction of being able to evaluate the, uh, the ability of the person who answers the questions asked? Well, I think there is one text, uh, and again, I hate to return so constantly uh, to simply truth or perfection or, or whatever it might be, but I think the question that can be asked is, if, is it good? And if it is good for humanity, is it good for society, is it good for all peoples, regardless of race, creed, color, or ethnic or origins, or whatever it may be, that then in the whole, uh, the subject would be good if it's an improvement. Now, as to the qualifications or the prejudices of the person answering the questions, I think that should be questionable. I don't think there should be any fear of questioning the authority of a person who claims to be an authority uh, on a subject. Uh, I think this is certainly something that is subject to challenge, and I don't think any of us should fear it. I'm challenged every day in my business, and uh, I think this is good for the democratic system. I think I should be challenged. I think I should be placed under the glaring light and open to inspection of my policies and my thoughts and my ideas. I think the same should apply to religion, to professional standards, to umbrella-type protection over certain professions that should be examined. Our school systems, our educational systems, uh, our so-called ivory tower precepts of what we have should all stand the entire scrutiny of examination and not fear it. Because if it's right, it'll withstand the examination. And if it's wrong, it can't long withstand it anyway. And I think we should encourage the questions and seek solutions. It's been my experience that I've learned a lot more because people have questioned something. And I think from the experience of professional teachers, for example, at whatever level, that their students make of them a, a, a better person because they do question themselves. Have we sometimes uh, too much of a tendency to uh, blame uh, an individual that through the questioning uh, got some very personal and emotional, perhaps, scars, and uh, have in, been inclined to make them live with those rather than what they learned uh, that will be a positive value for society. Well, I think this is true. I, I think that probably if, if we use the terminology scars, that scars are really more character building than they are destructive if the personality of the individual is correct. I, I think character is forged uh, by somewhat wrong decisions, by sorrows, by disabilities, as well as the happiness and the joys of life. I think that one is in balance with the other. For example, a thing that brings you the greatest joy usually holds the power of bringing you the greatest sorrow. Uh, and that uh, if these things become out of balance, or one does not counterbalance the other, then the character of the personality becomes scarred to the extent that it reflects something that is not a true, a true perception of the subject uh, discussed. Uh, and as a result, I think we do have warped uh, approaches uh, that are followed and are taught and sometimes are not questioned enough. 
So it is necessary to exercise care in seeing that what we see is a whole philosophy as well as a whole person reflecting that philosophy and an imbalanced person and an imbalanced philosophy and an imbalanced purpose of life. Because if a goal of life is only to seek wealth, then fulfillment will never be achieved in all probability. And if the goal of life is only to achieve uh, uh, certain materialistic developments, then I doubt that that will bring final fulfillment either. We have to relate to cultural areas and understanding and appreciation. We also have to relate somewhat, I believe, to spiritual areas of guidance in order to be a well-balanced total society as well as a well-balanced total person. And I think without relating the three areas together, the spiritual, the materialistic, and the cultural, that we do get out of balance from time to time and that we should encourage our young people to work for all three. Governor Hughes, thank you very much for sharing some of your comments concerning the youth of the state of Iowa and your thoughts concerning this with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.